Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing. Welcome and thank you for spending some of your time with me today. Today I want to reveal to you my dress for the Sew My Style challenge for the month of June. I'm only participating, not every month, but the month I do have the pattern already and I did have the pattern for this month, so I jumped right in. I'm also tying it in with my Minerva Makers project. So the fabric I used for this dress came from Minerva Crafts for free in exchange for a blog post I write for them. Now, if you look behind me there, what is behind me? That beautiful white flower and that pink one there. Now these are wild, they grow here, I do absolutely nothing for them. They are wild orchids. So what dress did I make? <laughs> the orchid midi. Now I've made the orchid midi before, I was a tester, I have my original dress I love. It's the first midi length skirt I've ever made, like in decades I think. Put a picture here so you can see it. I've got a full video all about it so I'm not going to review the pattern this time because I'm going to concentrate on something else. So I made the bodice twice. I made it for the dress and then I used the same orchid midi bodice for my jumpsuit with the parasol pants and that is not a mashup I invented. Those two pattern companies got together and created that and I think it's amazing and I love that jumpsuit. So I made the orchid midi again but I decided to hack the skirt and I knew I wanted to hack it into this sort of style from the get-go. Ever since I was working on my tester version my brain's always thinking what else can I do with this pattern because I like getting the most out of patterns for a creative thing that I like. So the skirts I want to use the same pattern pieces but I want to change the front appearance of the skirt into a tulip shape. On the up close and so personal I'm going to show you in miniature version of the pattern how I did that because the pattern pieces were so big I couldn't get a good view with my camera and the reference measurements I give to make these changes are just the ones I randomly chose you know the, the crossover of the skirt can be much lower I chose that measurement that you're going to see there because it's the height where the crossover will hit above the knee so you know if you want it below the knee you just cho choose and make whatever sizes you like for this type of skirt and this type can be added onto any dress with any bodice you know and it's one of one of the styles I really really like. So let's hop into up close and so personal to see how it was all done and then I will show you the dress. Don't you think this is starting to wear me? You've been raining down like hail on a week. I have tried to give you my soul, but you can't. Here you can see the line art and this is the original skirt so basically I want to create two pattern pieces that overlap each other so it, the skirt still is going to be midi length on the side and the back only at the front because of that tulip overlap there's going to be a high low and I love this type of skirt and I just have the vision of this dress being like that and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, this is a mini front pattern piece of the skirt. You can see that there's a seam in the center and a slit. That's why that has that shape right there. There's a 3-8 seam allowance there. So I just drew a line there to symbolize that 3-8 seam allowance that I'm going to fold back and eliminate. So I'm just going to get rid of that seam allowance. And now I can put this new pattern piece on a paper on the fold. So there's some paper, I've put the pattern piece that I've eliminated the center seam allowance from on the fold of this paper, drew the outline all the way around. Now I want to be clear I am eliminating the pocket that this pattern has. So that's something I've already done, that's why I've completed that hip area and you know otherwise there would be a slash pocket there. Anyway, then we get this thing and I'm going to cut it out. So then I have a full front extended pattern piece. What I figured out was that just to have this tulip shape overlap just above my knee, I needed the length from the waist down to be 20 and a half inches, okay? And now from the side seam here on the top of the hip, from the waist down, I just chose 10 inches. So I have these two reference points there. So then I just went and eyeballed a line. I went 
went like that, crossed there at the 20 and a half inch mark, went down there and then that. So I did a lot of play I, in my original pattern piece. I'm gonna put a picture here so you can see. I didn't achieve this line at the first go. I played, I had different shapes. So you're gonna see like lots of like ugly scribble marks until I got the shape that I wanted. This is just eyeballing, you know, I, yeah. So then you cut off that excess. And then this is gonna be the new pattern piece that you're gonna cut twice. And that is how you're gonna get this. You put one there and you put the other one on top. So these two areas will be closed in on the side seams there. And you're gonna have that lovely overlap on the front and it's going to be a midi skirt but not so much okay so here you can see the fabric and this will be placed one on top of the other whichever way doesn't really matter so looking at it like this it looks really strange but this is not how the skirt is going to be this is a very drapey flowy fabric so it's all going to be like that sort of thing when I'm wearing it. This is the length there that I didn't want shorter than the 20 and a half inches. What is that, 50 centimeters? So my knee will be sort of there, right there. This will need to be hemmed prior, so I need to hem this and I need to hem that before attaching this onto the back of the skirt. Here we have the skirt. You're looking at the wrong side of the fabric up. On the top, I have basted both skirt pieces together with a basting stitch right there. And I have pinned the front after sewing them together to the back on the side seams all the way down. Now on the bottom of the skirt at the side seam, I did sew about four inches. So I sewed and surged, but only that piece. The rest is still open and has a pin. So I've done that on both sides. And what this allows me to do is do the bias binding on all this thing. So you can see here, the bias binding starts there, goes all the way down the tulip shape, down to the back of the skirt, around catching that piece of side seam already did and then up 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 under there and then it shows up under there this is the bias binding that i'm using it's satin bias tape that i bought in bulk it's 18 millimeter wide and it's double fold as you can see to reduce the bulk i cut off one of these folds so that is what you can see there to make the bias binding narrower so then you have one bit there that will be gone and that's what I'm going to sew on to the hem as you can see there. I sewed it on in a quarter inch seam allowance and then I trimmed it out to half so narrower. What I have to do to the hem now is because this is all curved I'm going to do tiny snips and once I've done that I'm going to do like an under stitch that will catch the edge of the bias binding to that tiny seam allowance and then fold it up and then top stitch on the top and then the hem will be done. Once the hem is all done, I can just finalize these side seams and then carry on, you know, the skirt would be completed. Then I would just have to attach it to the bodice at the waist on the round. I finished all the process of the hem and it seems like backwards to start with the hem but now that it's all over I can forget about it. This is how it looks up close. You can see that first line of stitching that I did to secure the tiny seam allowance I had in there that ensures that the bias binding will be on the wrong side and not peeping through. The same thing you do on like necklines and armholes and things. 
and then I basted it on and then I sewed it on to the edge and on the right side it looks really neat it's gonna turn all these curves really nicely and it's done so that is a little piece of side seam that I had already sewn and surged now I can just complete this and this is a little bit there that is gonna get caught together and the same as on that side the skirt portion is completed you can see that nice curve that the skirt has in the design and the bias tape follows that beautifully look how clean that looks and there you can see the tulip shape and the side seams have been completed so I can tuck this away work on the bodice and then just pop it onto the bodice I'm doing belt loops instead of the casing so I just drafted a rectangle interfaced it on the other side I'll leave the measurements down in the description box as a reference but you can make this any size you want basically then I have six little loops that I'm going to fold onto each other and tuck within the waist seam uniting the bodice to the skirt as you're seeing there it does create a bit of bulk you can see the little fat little pieces there tucked in between both the skirt and the bodice and I've done that all the way around six and then I just have to sew this on the round and that will complete what I want to do okay here's my dress now I showed you this fabric before on my June plans um, came from Minerva Crafts it's a crinkle chiffon with this like I don't know if it's like zebra print but in these tones of brown and beige and black and I love the print so the bodice you all know about, the two previous ones I've made before have had color blocking on the yolks, front and back, but this time I actually made it, you know, normal. <laughs> no color blocking here. The inside there is finished with bias binding, brown bias binding. Uh, you saw I didn't want to do the casing with the elastic in this one and I experimenting with little tiny belt loops that you saw there. These are just sewn onto the waist seam right there and there's six, two in the front, two on the side seams and then two on the back. And they're just big enough to hold a thin belt like this. Um, actually this belt is reversible, I can put it on the brown or the black side. So depending on what shoe or what you know look I'm going for, I can switch it around so it's perfect. This is just a cheap little, little belt, nothing special. And then the skirt. Ah, it's hard to see here the length the full length you know this is uh, the crossover right there and you can see how I've done that bias binding now this bias binding technique is the same thing I would do on armholes or necklines you know the two stitching lines the parallel ones that you can see the first narrow one is to help the bias binding not peep through to the right side of the hem and the other one fixes it down so on the right side it looks really neat and it turns the curve beautifully on the hem even if it took me a, f a few hours <laughs> no not a few hours probably an hour to sew up totally worth it and it gives weight to the hem as well because this fabric is really flowy really airy here's how it looks uh, inside out <laughs> you can see I've got a safety pin there I need to find some clear snaps I haven't been able to find any so that is a temporary solution you can see the gathers here from the yoke, the sleeves, and this is what I've done to the waistline for longe longevity. Chiffon is a delicate fabric, so I have sewn the skirt to the bodice, and then I used bias binding to cover this uh, seam. There you can see where this crossover comes tucked in there, and that is the reason I had to do the hem first out of all the steps. You start backwards <laughs> for these types of designs so that's where it's tucked in there and the other one is tucked in underneath this is a way I have to have a midi skirt but also be long at the back and the side but short on the front so I like that high low here you can see the little belt loops that go in at the waist to cinch it in instead of having the casing and the elastic I really like this I like how the little loops turned out up close you can see the neckline the little gathers on the sleeve little gathers there below the front yoke and the little belt loops there are tucked into the side seam as I showed you super happy with it, it gives it just enough waist definition that I need 
and I am absolutely overjoyed with this project. So I am super happy as you can see my face right there. <laughs> this is a dress that I just, I love everything about it. I love the fabric, I like the style. I love that I can have the best of both worlds of having a shorter skirt and a longer skirt. And you know, that might not be for everyone, but that tulip can be less dramatic if you do the crossover lower. You know, take it 10 inches down lower and you'll still have a really nice tulip shape at the front but not so dramatic, not so high-low like I did. You know, all the things that I give you are just inspiration. I wanna give you like tools and ideas so that you can create things yourself with the, with the patterns that you have. And this was a super, super fun project for me and I have a dress that I absolutely love. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye.